Now here we are in 4.2, and I do apologize for some extra spooling over here that wasn't in the blank version. I was recording and I got chopped off at about seven minutes. So um, I'm gonna re-talk about it. Now 4.2 is where we start talking about exponential functions. And so normally in the past, we were always doing like y equals x squared, polynomials, rationals, right? But everything was always like x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, x, right? And notice that the number was the exponent and the base was the variable. Now, when you talk about exponentials, the base is the number and the variable is the exponent. So they kind of swap their positions, okay? And so it's always gonna look like y equals a, some base to the power x. Or if you use your function notation, it's f of x equal to that base with the power x. And now this is gonna come in handy big time. So I'm definitely gonna box that one. Um, because if you have two expressions that have the same base, and you're telling me that they're equal to each other, the only way it could happen is if their exponents were also equal to each other. So when we get to solving exponential equations, that topic right there is gonna come in handy a lot, okay? Now, um, for an exponential function, your base does have to be positive, okay? And there's a difference between when your base is greater than one or when your base is less than one, but it still has to be positive, okay? When it's greater than one, it's gonna be an increasing function. And when it's less than one, it's gonna be a decreasing function. And we'll see that in the next page, okay? Now, I'm telling you that the base has to be negative. That is different from f of x equal to negative a to the x, because that is actually just a negative coefficient times the exponential function, which has a positive base, okay? And then they're gonna ask you to evaluate these function values. So if this is your function, you're gonna plug each one of these x values up there to the exponent. So what you end up with is expressions that look like these. And then I'm just gonna type them in my calculator to figure them out. Um, if it turns out to be a decimal, then I'm going to um, round it to the, ten the hundreds place. So this one does give me one over 16 exactly. Four, this is your power button, raise to the fifth, gives me 1024. If I do four raise to the two fraction thirds and hit enter, it gives me that decimal and the nine will change the 51 to a 52. So this is what you get there. And then the last one, if we do four raise to the 2.15, we get this decimal and the eight will change the 69 to a 70, okay? And so then we get this answer here. So those are not too bad. It's just a matter of plugging them in your calculator correctly. Now, they do show us two different um, exponential functions. One that has a base where a is greater than one and then one that has a base where a is less than one, okay? And they pick a specific number, but you don't necessarily have to pick a specific number, okay? What I want you to notice is that regardless, if a is greater than one, right, then we know it's supposed to be increasing, so going up from left to right. If a is less than one, but still positive, then it should be decreasing like this. Regardless of whether the base is greater than one or less than one, you're always gonna have these three points on the graph. So regardless of what your base is, when you raise it to the zero power, it's gonna be one. So that's this point here. Again, regardless of what your base is, if you raise it to the first power, you're just gonna get the base by itself. Remember, we don't have to write one powers, they're invisible. So you just get whatever the base is as is. And then if you have a to the negative one exponent, Remember that means one over a to the positive one exponent, or just one over a. And another way of saying one over a in math is called the reciprocal. So whatever the base is, you write it as a fraction if it's not already written as a fraction, and then you flip it over, okay? So 
Notice that for this particular function, when the base is two, they have the zero one and then the one and the base two. But for negative one, they took two, put it over one and then flipped it over and got the reciprocal one half. The same goes for when the base was one half. Here's the three points that I need. When I plug in one, I get the base one half. When I plug in zero, I get one. And when I plug in negative one, I get the reciprocal of one half, which if I flip it over is two over one, which is just the value two. And that's what they have there, okay? Notice for both of these functions, regardless of what, if the base was greater than one or less than one, they both have that horizontal asymptote at zero. So the range will never include zero because it never ever touches that x-axis, okay? So let's use that information to try to graph one of our own. And so I didn't wanna do this problem. This problem was one half to the power x, which was already on the previous page. So I changed it to one over three to the power x. So remember, um, if you plug in zero as your exponent, you're gonna get one. If you plug in one as the exponent, you're just gonna get the base as it is. And then if you plug in negative one as the exponent, you're gonna get the reciprocal, which is three over one, which is just three. And so I drew my horizontal asymptote for the exponential. The asymptote should be at zero, as long as I don't have any shifting going on, right? Um, and then I plotted this point. So negative one and three, zero and one, and then one and one third. Now remember, if this number is less than one, it should be decreasing. One third is less than one, which means it should be decreasing. Is my graph decreasing? It is. So I do have a graph that makes sense. Now, here, notice what it says. It says graph each function, show the graph, um, this is stupid. It says show the graph of y equals 2 to the power x for comparison. It should be 3. You want to compare it to the same base. You don't want to compare 2 to the power x to 3 to the power x. That's not how it works, okay? So first thing we're going to do is no matter what, we're going to have this graph, right? Horizontal asymptote. Now I'm going to draw the this one in blue okay so if i make a table negative one zero and one when i plug in negative one i'm going to get the reciprocal of three so three over one if i flip it over becomes one over three and then three to the power zero is one three to the power one is three so if i mark this on here here's negative one one, two, three. Okay. So negative one and one third is about right here. Zero and one is there. One and three is here. And so then it's going up, obviously. And then here I cannot cross that red line. So it's going to trail off that way. This is three to the power x, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph this function a three to the power, or negative three to the power x. So when I plug in negative one, I get negative three to the negative one, which is a negative, and then I evaluate this, which is one third. So this becomes negative one third. Then when I plug in zero, I get negative three to the power zero. Negative carries along, and three to the power zero is one. So I get negative one. And then when I plug in one, I get negative three to the power one. Again, the negative carries over. Three to the power one is just three. Now you could type every single one of these expressions in your calculator, and you will get the same values, okay? You don't have to evaluate them by hand. So when I graph this, it's gonna be negative one and negative one third, zero and negative one, and then one and negative three. So this one is obviously going downward, and then this is going in this direction because I cannot cross that um, horizontal asymptote. Notice what happened. 
Just like before with our basic functions, this these have the same kind of transformations. So if you have a negative in front, it's supposed to flip it over the x-axis, and that's exactly what it's done. It's taken what was there in blue and flipped it over the x-axis, okay? So all they want you to do is know that all the reflections and translations and things like that that we had before with our previous basic functions, now we can just add on exponentials as another basic function, okay? So then this one would be very similar. I don't even need to um, do that because I already know the points for three to the power x and that's negative one and one third, zero and one, one and three. And then because the negative is up in the exponent next to x, it's inside the basic function, this one is going to reflect over the y-axis, okay? And so then what's gonna happen is if I reflect over the y-axis, all of these guys are gonna change signs which means that's gonna be a positive one and then one third. And that's gonna be zero still and one and then negative one and three. And so now notice that it's going in this direction. Again, still your asymptote is on the X axis, okay? Or you can do it old school way and just plug in your values. You're gonna plug in um, negative 1, 0, and 1, plug them into here. So 3, negative, negative 1 is 3 to the power positive 1, which is 3. Then 3 to the negative 0 is the same as 3 to the 0, which is still 1. And then 3 to the negative 1 is 3 to the negative 1, which means reciprocal of 3, which is 1 third. And you get the same points here. Positive 1, positive 1 and one third. Zero, negative zero and zero is the same, one. Negative one now and three, negative one and three. So whether you're using your transformations or you're just using these three values and then plugging them in, um, you should still be able to get the graph of that function, okay? Now we get to um, solving the exponential equations. So this is where that rule comes in play. They told us that if we had this kind of thing happening, then that meant that the exponents had to be equivalent to each other. So our job is gonna be, even though this one's already written with five as a base, our job is gonna be to try to get one over 125 written as five to some base. So we have to do some thinking here. The first thing we gotta think about is what on earth will give us 125? It's not gonna be five squared. So five squared gives me 25. Five raised to the third power does give me um, 125. It's no longer in the denominator. If you wanna move the position of something over a fraction, you have to change the sign of the exponent. Okay, so then that becomes 5 to the negative 3. And then now, because the bases are the same, the only way for these two expressions to be equivalent is if that exponent equals the other exponent. And since x is already isolated, I know exactly what the solution is to this problem. Now let's look at another one that's written like this. So whenever you have two exponential functions, you have to go with the lower base. So between three and nine, the lower base is three. So I wanna write these as three to some power equal to three to some power. Now, for this one, it already has three base, so I'm good. For this one, I need to write nine as three to some power. And nine is actually three squared. And then you have to remember, what do you do when you have an exponent raised to an exponent? You actually take the first inside exponent and you multiply it by the outside exponent. And because the bases are the same now, you still have that same property that you up here 
that says if the bases are the same, the only way this expression can be equivalent is if the two exponents are the same. And then if I solve this for x, this one's got a little bit more work, so I do have to distribute that too, and then I'm gonna start trying to solve for x. I'm gonna add six, and I get seven equals x. And so that would be my solution. Now can you check it? You most certainly can. You do three to the power seven plus one, nine to the power seven minus three. Here you get three to the power eight. Here you get nine to the power four. Let's go verify. Probably gonna be big numbers, but it's okay. Three to the power eight is this number. Nine to the power four is also that number. So it does check out, which is nice because on a test, you don't have to guess whether or not your work was correct because you can check your answers. Now I am gonna stop there because now we're getting into the word problems. Um, and so I'm gonna do a, a second recording just for the word problems.